man, we just want to give God glory. Hallelujah. There are so many things that have tried to come against us in worship this morning, and we're not going to give thanks to the enemy at all. Hallelujah. But we're going to settle ourselves. Hallelujah. And begin to bless God. We're going to move everything out of the way. Hallelujah. Everything that's on our minds that's not about the Lord and His worship and His honor in this morning. Hallelujah. God, we bless you. Lord, we praise you. We honor you, God.
bless all of you that are in the house on this morning. Amen. Thank God for the evangelist who is back with us on this morning. Come on, y'all. Put your hands together for our guests on this morning. Praise God. Praise God for that who is back with us this morning. Come on. Glory. 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 Troubles these way. Over there somewhere. Praise God. We're going to keep them in our prayers and check on them and see what we can do to help them out this morning. Come on, give God some glory. Hallelujah.
And we don't consider ourselves to be just to say what God has called us to be. It's just a mouthpiece for him. Amen. So we give him glory and honor for that. Amen. Uh, amen. This is uh, second Sunday, if I'm not mistaken. Amen. Our speaker today will be none other than uh, Pastor uh, Clarissa Pace. Amen. Uh, I saw her up this morning working real diligently. So I know that's a word from the Lord. Amen. So we just want you to just be prayerful with her. Amen. We want you to just be expecting God to move on her behalf. Uh, keep in mind those that are sick and shut in this morning. Amen. We pray for the bereaved families throughout the city. Uh, keep our mind lifted up in prayer, Sister Ethel uh, Thompson Brown. Amen. Uh, keep my brother lifted up in prayer, Holly Pace Junior. Amen. Keep uh, keep that young man's name. But my sister reached out to me the other day and said that uh, one of her neighbor's son was in in Texas and no, no. So, out of the blue, just took his life. Uh, we pray that God will uh, touch that family. They went through quite a bit. Amen. We pray that God will touch that family and cause comfort to come in their life. We don't know why people do what they do, but we do know that God has a window in the bush and God will take care of us in spite of that. Amen. We pray for each and every one of you that's here today that God will enlighten you, touch you. We pray for your families. We pray for you. I would just continue to cover you, amen. And I'm not a singer, amen. So I'm gonna just move to the left and allow the spirit to drop this out of the
Lord's help. Come on, but now you gotta stand up. Sister Shamil, praise God, amen. I heard about it. Mm-hmm. But God kept you, didn't he? Yeah. Praise the Lord. I heard she got sick on us. She didn't call nobody. Amen. But God is keeping her in our body. Amen. Because yeah. we're praying for her. Amen. And not only that, amen. She's advancing in school. Amen. Come on, that's straight <laughs>
who called his servants and entrusted his property to them. Verse 15. To one, he gave five talents of money. To another, two talents. And to another, one talent. Each according to his ability. Then he went on his journey. I, I just kind of want to get, I ain't finished yet, but I just want you to understand that when he distributed these talents out, notice that he said according to his ability. Each one of them has an ability. And when God gives you something, he gives it according to your ability. So you don't have to be looking to do what somebody else does and because he's only going to deal with you or give you what is yours. Yes. Amen? Amen. Amen? The man who had received the five talents went at once and put his money to work and gave five more. Verse 17, so also the one with the two talents gained two more. But the man who had received the one talent went off, dug a hole in the ground, and hid his master's money. In other words, there were two of them that made the money what? Grow. Somebody everybody said grow. Grow. Two of them went and did something with their ability, with their talent, and it grew. But the one who hid, hmm, <laughs> it didn't grow, right? 19 says, after a long time, a long time, it's been a while, yeah. the master of those servants returned and settled accounts with them. Mm -hmm. That means that the master came back. He wanted to check in and, okay, pretty much this is like a loan I'm doing for you, and I got to come back in and check to see how well you've been doing with it. Did it grow? Because I come to collect. Yeah. that all right? Yeah. Verse 20 said, the man who had received the five talents brought the other five. Master, he said, you entrusted me with five talents. See, I have gained five more. Verse 21, the master replied, well done. Good and faithful servant. You have been faithful with a few things. I will put you in charge of many things. Come and share your master's Happiness. Look here. Because he did the right thing. Not only was the master happy, but he get a chance to share in the happiness. Amen? And I won't be happy in here. Yeah. Then the next man, the man with the two talents also came. Master, he said, you entrusted me with two talents. See, I have gained two more. I doubled it. Each one of them doubled it, right? Yeah. The master replied, well done, good and faithful servant. You have been faithful with a few things. I will put you in charge of many things. Come and share your master's what? Happiness. There you go. Share this happiness with me. Verse 24. Then the man who had received the one talent came. Master, he said, I'm going to give you a talk right here. I know that you are a hard man. Harvest it where you have not sown, and gather where you have not scattered seed. You know, a little false humility right there. Right. Okay? So I was afraid. And when I and he hid your talent, notice he said, your talent. Mm -hmm. He didn't even take it and operate like it was his. You see what I'm saying? You get that? I like to look at my baby right there. She's so intelligent. Okay, your talent in the ground. See, here is what belongs to you. His master replied, you wicked and lazy servant. In other words, he went off. <laughs> he went off. You wicked and lazy servant. So you knew that I harvest where I have not sown and gather where I have not scattered seed. You, you, are, you are in a new situation. Are you listening to what I'm talking Y'all hear me? Y'all, y'all, this ought to be relative to you. Y'all had something happen like this. Okay, so, well then, you should have put my money on deposit with the bankers so that when I return, I would have received it back with interest. Since you know so much, why you didn't go and invest it? Since you know that 
I invest in others. Why didn't you turn around and invest what I gave you? I'm just saying. So 28, take the talent from him and give it to the one who has the ten talents. But everyone who has will be given more. And he will have an abundance. Whoever does not have, even what he has will be taken from him. And throw the work of certain outside into the darkness where there will be weeping and gnashing of teeth. The title of my message this morning, Becoming a Part of Kingdom Building. Can we say that? Becoming a Part of Kingdom Building. I use the word becoming because it is a process. Becoming means it's a process. We don't have this overnight. But we got to learn, first of all, what satisfies God and the fact that you disconnected from this earth. You are now working for the kingdom of God, which is far beyond the earth. Had nothing to do. It ain't the same as down here. If you go to the end of the story, I preached it. If you go to the end, go to Revelations, you see that the end, this kingdom we talk about ain't got, ain't got the same confusion, ain't got the same messiness, ain't got the same hopelessness, ain't got the hope, same unforgiveness, ain't got none of that in the kingdom. It's a different level. That's why we've been preaching this season how it's, uh, it's not church as usual because the kingdom is not church as as usual. Okay? Jesus' method of communication to his disciples was by using parables. This story right here is a parable. And a parable is an earthly story with a heavenly meaning. Okay? So, I want to turn to Matthew 13 for a minute. I want to read Matthew 10 to explain this to you. Matthew 13, verses 10 through 15. I'm going somewhere. Y'all stay with me, stay with me, stay with me. I believe somebody could preach this already. So, 10 through 15. The disciples ask him, because we, we ask the, time, the question, why did Jesus have to talk in parables? I, I, I told him until I was filled with the Holy Ghost, I really didn't have no, no wisdom, like, you know, no understand jokes and stuff. I didn't get them. I'm just straight, you know, straight A student that, you know, get this book sense and stuff. And it's kind of like even when I remember getting saved and, and reading these parables, I'm like, oh my God. <laughs> Why would he keep speaking in parables when he could have just spoke directly and told them if you lazy and wicked and stuff, you ain't going to make it, okay? So I want to explain to you. I want to give you the conversation that was held between them in Matthew 13, verses 10. Uh, I'm sorry, verses 14 through 30. Okay, give me a minute. Okay. The disciples came to him and asked, why do you speak to the people in parables? He replied, the knowledge of the secrets of the kingdom of heaven has been given to you, but not to them. What you think he's saying? Since you confess Christ and you are a disciple, the knowledge of the kingdom, you have access to it. But anybody outside the kingdom don't have access. Now this ain't really my message, but I'm going to say this because we have to understand that we can't take advice from everybody. The book, the Facebook, the Instagram, the groups, they got all kind of advice. You know, I'm a creditor's pair specialist. And I go into a little group. And it's people that ain't been doing this work. And it's people that's all you can do it yourself. Yeah, you can do a certain amount of it yourself, but there's another advanced level that you must go to depending on what people got going on. Everybody ain't got that experience. Everybody don't know the legalities of that. They're just told, pay the bill, you'll be all right. It's kind of like with the kingdom of heaven. You, I, and I'm looking, and I'm saying, I can't take advice from them. They don't understand the program. And so we got these people that Jesus is talking to. It's like, you got a privilege that people that's not walking with me don't have. 
You're listening to me. So in verse 12 it says, Whoever has will be given more and he will have an abundance. Whoever does not have, even what he has will be taken from him. This is why I speak to them in parables. Though seeing, they do not see. Though hearing, they do not hear or understand. In them is fulfilled the prophecy of Isaiah. You will be ever hearing, but never understanding. You will be ever seeing, but never perceiving. Verse 15, for this people's heart has become callous. They hardly hear with their ears. And they have closed their eyes. Otherwise, they might see with their eyes and hear with their ears, understand with their hearts, and turn, and I would heal them. Uh, let's talk about that. So, the unwillingness on the part of the people that Jesus was talking to is the reason he talked to parents. Because people... We say it like this. When we when you know we get a rub with people and we change our language. We'll say, that's the only language they understand. Don't play y'all. No, so I had to talk to them like that. You be like saints. We don't say that until I had to talk to them. Because <laughs> it's the only language they understood. So here Jesus is saying, I have to give you parables because you can't understand the spiritual man. And not only that, you don't want to hear. In the scripture he says, their hearts became callous. So there's a certain amount of people of God who still, after you confess, I watched, uh, I watched, uh, what's the baby name here? Uh, Tank? It Tank? It one of them. One of them was the only <laughs> And so he came on. <laughs> And uh, he started trying to give somebody some advice. Yeah. He used a scripture, totally out of context, to try to justify something that's going on. And I'm thinking, I think he needs to stay in his lane. Just keep writing love songs. Keep lying to the girls. Because you don't need to play like you can hear from God. I, I, we got it all over the nation. Folk don't want to really hear until they want to use a piece of it they learned in Sunday school. They ain't even worshiping. They ain't praying. They ain't got no relationship. And now they want to go find John 3.16 or Romans 10. All you have to do is confess with your heart, believe in your mouth. There's another level to this salvation. The next thing is you got to work on your soul salvation. Yeah. You got to work to be delivered from everything that you have attached to you before you say I do. Yeah. Or that I will. Mm -hmm. no. I take work. Pastor said that it take work. Yeah. Yeah. And so the truth of the kingdom was not hidden. It was right before the people. But they could not hear it. Because they did not want to receive it. Why would they not receive and hear the word of his before? Jesus was the word. Jesus is the word. He was standing before them. But they didn't want to hear it. Why? Because it would require making changes. A.K.A. repentance. How many of us have been there? I done walked in church and the preacher's preaching. When I was younger, when I was younger. I want to put some Q-tips with some tissue in my ears. Like, Lord, have mercy. I've been out all night. <laughs> and he said, I'm just talking. <laughs> he talking about this church girl. <laughs> yeah, be going to say it right. <laughs> yeah, some of us been up in there and dropped it like it's hot. <laughs> yeah, bumping it and grinding and all that kind of stuff. And I'm like, I don't want to hear him talk about holiness. <laughs> Cause that means I gotta change, and I ain't ready. Anybody been there? Amen. I ain't ready. Amen. Don't play. See, you gotta understand that your ways are not God's ways. Amen. Your thoughts are not God's thoughts. 
And certainly your opinions are not his opinions. It is God's word and ways that sells it for you and for me. Sometimes it looks strange to forgive. I'm talking about, I'm talking about doing things in the kingdom. I'm talking about becoming kingdom minded because all of us don't want to forgive. But when you are part of the kingdom, the kingdom forgive the prostitute, the liar, the backbiter, the gospel, the offender. Oh, y'all, are y'all with me? Sometimes it looks strange to love. Love those who don't love you back. Sometimes it looks strange to understand circumstances that could have killed you. Sometimes it doesn't feel good, but there is peace. You bring peace by walking away. That's the kingdom. Sometimes it doesn't feel right to submit because submit seems like slavery, ladies. Church members, because that's out of your job, workers, you have authority that you submit to. It don't feel good. Sometimes it don't feel good or feel right to obey. We take it out of the vows. Because heaven forbid, obey a man. I watched the show. I watched the show. I'm watching this girl that's over here. No, I didn't. We were sitting in a restaurant at the taco place. And she talked about all her friends who were married and why she couldn't be married. And it looked funny that they, girls, her friends, they can't go out and can't do this because they in there washing clothes and they hugging at work and they picking up the cheering. Yeah, you know, she better stay single. <laughs> and she gonna stay single. Because <laughs> she don't know what this journey is like. <laughs> she don't want this. She don't want this part. But we have to submit, give our bodies to them when we don't want to. You know, take a time now. Ain't no headache. <laughs> Ain't no headache. <laughs> it's a word. I'm just saying. I'm going to help. I'm going to help the lady. I'm going to help the ladies. Yeah, I'm like, baby. I'm sitting there going, ooh, I will eat dry. I was like, ooh. And a friend trying to help us. like, nah, it don't make sense to me. And then they have job and they look like they might. Ooh. I ain't heard about something like that ever. It might look funny to serve. Yeah. Serve when you don't feel like serving. Yeah. Serve when you're tired. Yeah. It might feel funny to press your way because you feel like giving up. Yeah. It might feel funny to you to keep standing when you know you've been knocked down. Yeah. Yeah. But somebody said this morning, but God. But God. His kingdom yeah. is different yeah. from our kingdoms. Yeah. It is. So the parable of the talent addresses our place and service to God. To be a part of kingdom building depends on the faithfulness in our lives and the service to God and to one another. Can I let you know God is testing you every day? He's testing your loyalty every day, every second, every minute. I used to say this. When my children would get write ups in school, it would I would take it deep and mainly because of my guilt. Some people just passed over, put in a, a, a hat in the corner, and it was nothing, but I'm a prophet. So I could read things when they would get in trouble in school and say, hmm, they're gonna have problems spiritually. If they can't follow directions now. Y'all listen to me. Y'all better whip them children now and make them obey. If they can't obey authority now, if these are the complaints that I'm getting, if they can't follow instructions in the classroom now, they're going to have a problem serving God. If they don't want to get up and serve their sister, I'm talking about in the house, or serve each other, their brother, or serve us as parents, they're going to have a problem serving God. Amen. If you have a problem with commitment and you are walking around declaring that you ain't going to commit to her, to him, you got a problem with the Lord. 
You're going to have one. Yeah, man. Everything we do, every step we make, mm -hmm. is a test. Because yes. mm. we're talking about becoming a part of the kingdom of God. This means, what are you doing on earth? you got to question these things. What are you doing on earth? How are you doing what you're doing on earth? Is what we are doing on earth pleasing God? Do you ask that question? When I wake up in the morning, when I go to my friends, when I'm talking to my friends, is this pleasing God? What motives are you operating under? What disposition or spirit of heart are you doing it in? Uh, I'm going to give you a little sidebar again. People have asked me over and over again, how do you do what you do? You look like the ever ready bunny. Now, I got to tell y'all, I gave somebody the smoke screen in that because I don't work 24-7. I don't. <laughs> I do put my feet up in the recliner <laughs> and just be melted in the recliner. <laughs> But thank God for the internet. Yeah. <laughs> you can schedule ads, make videos, post them when you sit down. I'm just, I'm just talking because people will call me and say, well, you so busy. No, I'm not. But when y'all punch a clock for 12 hours, what you call that? And you ain't got no choice. I got a choice to stay home for three days if I want to, don't I, yep. I can make that choice. But the question is always asking me, how do you do what you do? My answer is, I read the Bible. Yeah. I do what I do in the church and out of the church because I read the Bible. And particularly, I begin to understand this parable of the talents. Yes. Are you listening to me? Amen. I got a good understanding of what was going to please God when I wake up in the morning. And I thought about all the excuses I ever made, all the lies I ever told for the things I did not complete. I worked to break curses, bloodline curses, not finishing school, not having a lasting marriage, not having money. Y'all ain't listening to me. Y'all listening to me? That took work, but it came from this parable in my life. I learned to be a faithful member. I had no clue, ain't asked to be no pastor, nobody's Sunday school teacher. But I became a faithful member of the church. My word was my bond. If I took on responsibility, I got it done. Without murmuring and complaining, because I read that in the Bible too. Yeah. <laughs> I sought to keep the peace. I do the same thing at work. If it take me getting up at 6 o'clock in the morning to make a deadline, meet a deadline, take care of a customer, do what I need to do for employees, whatever I say I'm going to do, i got to be totally overwhelmed not to get it done. Now I'm getting a little bit old. It's slipping. I tell them to send me a text or something. Wow. <laughs> but that's the only reason. Yeah. I read the Bible. And I got it. I never thought that me being lazy, full of excuses, procrastinating, choosing to do other things before God's business was wicked. I read the Bible. Did y'all just read that? He said, in the King James Version, it says, when he told the man who buried his talent was that he was wicked and lazy. In the King James, it said, Wicked and slowful. Mm. So let's look at the panel. Talents represent your ability to be productive, resourceful, and manage what? Opportunities. Amen. Ain't God good? Amen. Your ability to be productive, resourceful, and manage opportunities. Believe it or not, these things are considered by God. In his kingdom. Yeah. This is how he judges our level of trust right. and commitment to him and to others. Yeah. He looks at our level of administration in our lives, which means stewardship. Mm -hmm. Didn't you know you were you, you 
You are, you living here on modern time? Amen. He made every last one of us managers. Yeah. And and he says that you gotta manage life according to my principle. You can't manage life according to your feelings, according to your flesh, your ideas, your opinion. You have to manage this thing if you want to please God according to God. Because the scripture says, do everything as doing it unto who? Unto him. Amen. Y'all with me? So why would doors be open to liars? Why would doors be open to thieves? Why would doors be open to cheaters and schemers and disloyal people and irresponsible people? Why would the master give us anything if we have not learned to master the stewardship? If we cannot be trusted with the lies he has given us, you got to understand that your life is not your own. Yes, yes. It's only here for borrowed time yes, yes. for you to make your life productive yes. for the kingdom of God. Yes, yes. I don't care what you're doing, where you are, and how you're doing. Yes. It's right all day. Yes. You cannot keep a job or keep up in a professional environment like that. Mm. So why do you do that for the church? Y'all know y'all can't be late going to work. Yes. So why are you going to be late going to church? Yes. Yes. I ain't trying to hurt about the building, Lord, so I just got to help you. I got to help you because the Lord want to bless you. Is that all right? Amen. Ain't trying to hurt about the building. Why would you give a man, as y'all say, build your word and you show up, but you give the pastor your word and we can't find you? Why? Why? You can't keep a job that way. You might as well quit before they write their papers. I see. I had a friend that said, Who and, uh, got fired from their job. Really, they got fired, but they said they quit. It's called when the manager came to them with the right of things, like, Don't worry about it. I'm just going. I'm just leaving. <laughs> now, they know they guilty. I already mean, know they ain't been going to work on time. Been still. Yeah. So they like, That's all right. That's all right. I'm out for that. <laughs> Y'all have been in that situation. You ain't got it. You ain't got nothing. And this may come a little harsh to some of us. But when you are slack on your responsibilities to yourself, others, and God, let me tell you what it produces. It produces murmuring. Complaining. You want to know why church people complain? Because they ain't doing nothing. The pastor ought to do this. The musician ought to do that. The deacon ought to do this. The usher ought to do that. They ain't doing this. Because you ain't on your job. I don't like this. What did you do to change? What time did you put in? Because we're talking about becoming a part of the kingdom. Oh, are y'all with me? So when you got that out of time, and you are disconnected from the kingdom, you wouldn't even know when the kingdom was moving no how. Yeah. <laughs> Thank you. Yeah. You got that. You wouldn't even know. Didn't, didn't Jesus just say to his disciples, and they said, why are you talking to me in a parable? And he said, listen, you, I got it right there before you, but you don't know it because your heart is on. Yeah. 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 Your mouth is on. Yeah. Your mind is somewhere else. Your body might be sitting in the church, but your mind is on the other side of town. How would you know what God wants? Lord, have mercy. I'm just, I'm just saying. Not only do your mother complain, but you're back by gossip. And you're merciless. Can't show each other no mercy, no grace. Not even in the church, but at home. Your friends don't get in. Opinionated and judgmental. In your behavior. Or because you are not adding up. All because you are not adding up. To what pleases God. You stand in the place of darkness. And don't even know it. And that the Bible he just said. You wicked. He just said you wicked. And then he just sends them and said. Go to hell. <laughs> that what he said. Am I right y'all? That's what he said. Yeah. Go to hell. I got that. When I learned that, when I got saved for real, sister, 
sister. And I learned that. I was like, ooh, I got to be about my father's business. Amen. When the pastor told me I need to be a witness, I went to my job, Matt, and I printed out daily breads. I still had to change some. I still had some things to do, but I became a witness. The church said, go be a witness. I passed out daily breads. Every day I went to work, I was talking for everybody in the building. Whatever was said to be done, I took off and I did it. They said pray, I didn't know if I was even getting my prayer through. I was just praying. When they said the church doors was open, we can have a revival. You need to be full of the Holy Ghost. I'm the first one to run to the altar. Hey, my shots, I can't hear them. Hear me up, Lord. Because they told me that if I was baptized in the Holy Ghost, me and my father, that my life would be changed.
Some of you are faithful to your messes in life. Some of you are faithful to a mess and mess in life. Some of you are faithful to your darkness in your life. Some of you are faithful to your wickedness in life. Oh, wait. 
waste of time. Stop talking about your dream and live your dream. Stop talking about your vision and walk out your vision. It ain't never going nowhere. Just post it on Facebook ain't good enough. Post it on Instagram ain't good enough. Making a TikTok ain't good enough. What kind of work are you going to put in? What kind of work are you going to put in? What kind of time are you going to give? What kind of life are you going to live? Trust. 
what you said and yes and something else too. Am I right about it? There's something else in your mind. Mm. Hey, glory to God, that you could be going all the way with. And you keep second guessing. The Lord said, all you gotta do is make up your mind. And then he said, because you are worth it. You think you ain't in line with God. Are you listening to me? Did I say the kingdom of heaven ain't like our opinions? So I don't care what man say about you. I don't care what your family think about you. I don't care what no girlfriend think about you. Am I talking to you? You are in line. Oh yes. I have to bless you.